Hey all, so today we're gonna to be looking at C1.3, which is photosynthesis, and this is the HL content for this. And so a lot of this you're gonna see is quite similar to the HL content for C1.2, which was cellular respiration. Um, we're looking at pages 395 to 409 in the Oxford textbook, and we're trying to answer the question, how is energy from sunlight absorbed and used in photosynthesis? So first we need to understand the chloroplast structure. And the first thing that we're thinking about here is the stroma. So this is where the light independent reactions are happening. And this is where sugars are going to be made from carbon dioxide. This is kind of like the matrix in the mitochondria. Then we're looking at the thylakoid space, and this is functioning the same way that the intermembrane space does in mitochondria. So this is these stacks here. This is where the light dependent reactions are happening, where ATP is made and where NADPH, so P as in photosynthesis, um, NADPH is going to be reduced. And remember that reduction is gaining hydrogen and electron. So uh, NADP is gonna be reduced to NADPH. And inside each one of these is called a thylakoid. Um, these are called thylakoid stacks or sometimes grana. Um, and inside each of these, there's a small space that allows for a concentration gradient of hydrogen ions to form uh, the hydrogen ion dance party. And that's gonna flow back through ATP synthase via chemiosmosis to make uh, ATP out of ADP. Um, in the membranes of the thylakoids, there are photosystems and they are gonna absorb energy from sunlight to make this process happen um, in order to reduce NADPH uh, and then also to move the hydrogen ions. So prokaryotes have variable shaped thylakoids. Um, that are attached to the plasma membrane on the inside here. Eukaryotes have disc-shaped stacks of thylakoid um, and unstacked connective areas, which are called the stroma lamellae. And um, in the grana uh, membrane here, the stacks, you're going to find more photosystem 2 and B6F. And then all in the stroma lamellae, you're going to find more photosystem 1 and ATP synthase. So we'll talk a bit more about that as we see those things. So this is the light dependent reaction. This is what's happening in the thylakoids. And so water is being used as a hydrogen ion donor and it goes through lysis, which splits it. It makes oxygen, which is a waste product and is gonna diffuse out of the stomata of the leaves. And then hydrogen ions are also created. And so um, the electrons are picked up by photosystem two, excited by light. And then they're gonna move down this chain to BF6 and then to this PC thing and up to photosystem one where the electron is recharged with light and it is used to uh, reduce NADP to make NADPH. And you can see there's some hydrogen ions outside in the stroma. This is because they're passing through ATP synthase, but the hydrogen dance party, hydrogen ion dance party here, the high concentration gradient is gonna be inside the lumen so that they will flow through ATP synthase and make ATP from ADP. So in photosystems here, so this is looking at photosystem two and then photosystem one, they contain about a hundred chlorophyll um, pigments and then about 30 accessory pigments. And inside the photosystem core here, the reaction center, there's lots of different pigments. And the core complex has light harvesting antenna that are absorbing light energy um, and exciting the electron. A specific wavelength is needed to do this. And when an electron drops down to its normal energy state, the energy can be emitted as light, which is called fluorescence. We don't really see that, um, but that's what's going on with the electron. But that electron could be transmitted to another pigment um, and therefore uh, transmitted to the other photosystem. And so that's what's happening here. The electron here is excited. It transfers down, it's reducing its energy, and then it's passed on to photosystem one where it then is re-energized. Um, and it's being done via electron acceptors that are transferring it along between the photosystems. So in a photosystem two, 
Um, that's containing P680 chlorophyll, which is a strong reducing agent. And the oxygen evolving complex contains magnesium, oxygen, and calcium. And it is going to bind to water molecules and split them to release those electrons um, and create free hydrogen ions as well as oxygen as a waste product. And this process is called photolysis or photolysis, which means splitting. And that's the reaction there that's happening. That's happening on the inner surface of the thylakoid membrane and protons are released into the thylakoid space, which is gonna create that hydrogen ion, uh, hydrogen ion gradient. Electrons are transferred to the reaction center um, to replace activated electrons that have moved to the next photosystem and oxygen is gonna diffuse out of the leaves. So the advantages of the photosystem structure are that photons, um, Photons of, the light, photons of light are scattered. And because these photosystems have a, hundreds of different pigment molecules, that's gonna increase the number of photons absorbed by about a hundred times because these pigment molecules absorb at specific wavelengths. So if we have a wide range of pigments, we can absorb at a wide range of wavelengths. And um, chlorophyll does not absorb green light, for example. So if we have different pigments that do absorb at green light, uh, wavelengths such as something like xanthocyanin, then you would have more wavelengths of light absorbed. And the energy is only transferred when pigments are close and precisely oriented. So otherwise that results in fluorescence. In the case of the electron transport chain here inside the thylakoid membrane, the structure funnels the energies of the electrons to the reaction centers based on the structure of the photosystem. So photosystem two, that electron is energized and then it's funneled via these carrier proteins to photosystem one, where it's then able to be used with uh, reduction of NADP. So um, plastoquinone is one of those carrier electrons and it picks up the electron and drops it off at the B6F complex. And then it'll go back to PSU two to pick up more electrons. When it does that, it becomes plastoquinol. And then when it drops it off, it's back to plastoquinone. B6F is going to transfer electrons to plastocyanin. Plastocyanin is water soluble, so it can move in this thylakoid space. Um, and it is going to transfer the electrons to the photosystem one. Notice that photosystem two is first and then photosystem one is second. I'm not sure why that is. It's just something that we need to remember, unfortunately. Um, in PS1, the electrons have less energy than they did in PS2, um, so they need to be re-energized. Um, and that, that chlorophyll is P700 chlorophyll, and it's gonna be used using this ferredoxin electron carrier to reduce NADP to make NADPH. NADPH is reduced by accepting two electrons to make NADPH. And if NADP plus runs out in the stroma, uh, what's gonna end up happening is that electron from B6F is actually going to move back to PS2 so that it can continue to move through this plastoquinone. And that will allow PS2 to continue functioning, continuing to make hydrogen ions so that AP, ATP is still going to be able to function, uh, sorry, be made through ATP synthase because we'll still be able to maintain a hydrogen ion uh, dance party concentration gradient inside the thylakoid. So then we move into the light independent reactions and that's happening in the stroma and they need NADPH um, to be able to function there. So this reaction is going to take carbon dioxide and it is going to add it to this molecule here, which is called ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate. It's functioning the same way that oxaloacetate functions in the mitochondria. So it's going to add this carbon dioxide onto ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate. And it is going to cycle six times to make one glucose molecule. And the attachment process is facilitated by this enzyme Rubisco, which is a, a critical um, enzyme for the production of plant growth because otherwise plants wouldn't be able to make sugars for themselves. So 
it is going to then go through uh, re, re, uh, restructuring and form this PGA molecule. And then ATP is added onto it, as well as, any, sorry, phosphate is added onto it via use of ATP to ADP. And then NADPH is added on. So the hydrogen ions, uh, NADPH becomes oxidized to become NADP plus hydrogen ions and electrons go to this G3P structure. And this G3P structure is going to also be called triose phosphate. That's what it's usually called in our textbooks. Um, the PGA thing is just an intermediary that we don't need to know about, but it's an intermediary between the ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate and the G3P process. So um, then this G3P is going to be restructured and one of these G3P molecules will eventually be taken out, but then most of them are gonna be restructured using ATP to reform this ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate. And after six cycles of the Calvin cycle, we'll end up with two G3P molecules that are then formed into one glucose molecule. Um, so with this process, um, Rubisco is highly efficient and actually Rubisco is quite inefficient. And um, so there needs to be a lot of it in the stroma to make these reactions happening happen. And if there's low light conditions, then G3P is going to be limited because we're going to end up with not so much NADPH because our electron transport chain isn't working so well. Um, but So when we're looking at glucose production, glucose is made by that photosynthesis process. We've already seen this image about glucose uh, and sucrose being carried in the phloem. And so glucose is converted and transported as sucrose out of the leaves. And if there is too much glucose in the leaves, then it can be converted at to starch in the leaf and stored in the chloroplast temporarily. And then at nighttime, it'll be converted into sucrose. Chloroplasts can convert G3P into fatty acids, glycerol, and triglycerides. All the amino acids can always be synthesized using branching metabolic pathways, but what will be needed is mineral nutrients from the roots, such as sulfate and phosphate, to make those happen. And remember that in proteins, we might have sulfur molecules in them. The light and dark reactions rely on each other to work, and the dark reactions require NADPH and ATP, which are going to quickly run out in the dark. Um, and dark reactions are the light independent reactions. So if we have no more NADPH because the electron transport chain isn't working, then the dark reaction is going to slow down or stop. The light reactions can only occur if there's NADP+. Plus, um, which requires NADPH to be used. And so that's linking those two processes together. They can't work independently. They have to be connected to each other because this NADPH, NADP plus carrier molecule is a key factor in making both of those systems work. And actually, interestingly, about two and a half billion years ago, cyanobacteria first started making oxygen uh, through this process uh, and caused iron to oxidize um, from rocks. And then it actually made these red bands on the sea floor. So we're able to see that today and test those rocks to see when that started happening. And it was only after that, that um, cells started to become aerobic respirers. And then um, endosymbiosis actually occurred after that. All right, to summarize, the thylakoid is where the light dependent reactions are making NADPH and ATP through the movement of electrons and hydrogen ions um, using electron carriers and a hydrogen ion concentration gradient. NADPH and ATP move from the thylakoid to the stroma, and the stroma is where the light independent reactions are happening and they're making glucose using the enzyme Rubisco um, and ATP and NADPH 
to and carbon dioxide to make glucose. And it takes six cycles of the Calvin cycle to make one glucose molecule. Quick mention here, Melvin Calvin is who the Calvin cycle is named after. And he won the 1961 Nobel prize for his research on this. So then lastly, glucose will be made in the chloroplasts and it's going to be stored as starch potentially um, before it is transported as sucrose. And here you can see some electromicrographs of chloroplasts. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.